Hello, my name is Miss Reese and I'm the Visual Performing Arts Teacher on Assignment and what we're going to do today is we're going to create a view of an installation inspired by the artwork of Yayoi Kusama. So what we're looking at here is the corner of a room that's been covered in multicolored dots and in the center here is an object that is also covered in multicolored dots. You'll notice that there aren't there aren't any outlines or there are very faint outlines on this object that's in the center here. And in this piece I decided I was going to use one of my favorite things which is a paintbrush. You can do that or you can <clears throat> draw a tulip in a pot very much like the ones that Yayoi Kusama puts in many of her installations. So what I'm going to demonstrate here is how to draw this tulip in the center here um, of the corner of the room. And if you want to go ahead and follow these instructions you can do that. If not, you can um, pause and after I do the corner and you can um, Instead of drawing the tulip, you can draw the object that is your face. So I have my ruler, and the first thing I want to do with it is I'm going to measure five inches from this left edge here. So I'm going to measure five inches up here at the top, and I'm going to mark it. And I'm going to pull the ruler down, and I'm going to do the same thing down here, because you always want to measure twice so that you end up with a straight line. Then I'm going to line my ruler up with the top of the page and these two dots that I measured and I'm going to draw a straight line down to the number seven line. Let's see, can you see that? Yes. And then I'm going to measure from the top bottom corner up three inches. So I'm going to line up my ruler here with the three and then I'm going to make a dot here because I want to line up the bottom of this line segment with that dot so I have a diagonal that will represent the bottom of this wall on the right. So I'm going to hold my ruler down firmly and I'm going to draw in that line. On the other side, on the other corner, I'm going to measure from the two inch mark on the side of the paper like so and then I'm going to line up my ruler with the corner intersection here and the dot that I made at the edge of the left edge of the page and I'm going to draw in another line. So now I have the, the right wall, the left wall, and the floor of this gallery space that we are either going to put a tulip in or our favorite thing. So if you're going to put your favorite thing in here, you can pause the video and you can draw your favorite thing. Keep in mind that you want to keep your drawing as simple as possible. No details and no shading. You also want to make sure that your, your object is going to take up space from here on the page to about here on the page. You want it to be big. You don't want it to be this little tiny object. You want it to take up a lot of space. So you're going to make it nice and big. So you can go ahead and pause the video if that's where you're going to stop. For those of you who want to do the tulip, stay with me. The next thing we're going to do for the tulip is we're going to draw in a curved line like this. And then we're going to put in an angled line here. It's slightly angled. This represents the top of the pot. And then this one's a little too long, so I'm going to shorten it because I want these two lines to be the same. Now I'm drawing a little darker than you should be drawing because we are going to erase most of these lines when our, our um, dots are all complete. But I'm drawing dark so that you can see what I'm doing. So here I'm going to draw another curved line that echoes this one. We can't say that curved lines are parallel because curved lines can't be parallel, but as if they could, we want this curved line to be as close to parallel as one could get. And we want it to extend a little bit further past 
these two first straight diagonals that we created. So like that, and then we're gonna put a straight diagonal here and a straight diagonal here that echoes the angle of this line. And then we're going to have another curved line that echoes this one. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna loop it around to create a foreshortened circle. Now a foreshortened circle is a circle that we view from the side instead of a circle that we view from above. So when we see a circle from above, it's very round. But when we see it from the side, it starts to become more oblong, more oval shaped. So that's what we're trying to create here. And I'm accidentally creating, a, mine is a little bit sloped, but I can fix that later. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna erase this because I know that this object is not transparent, or at least I don't want it to appear to be transparent. So I'm gonna erase the lines where the bottom of the walls go through the pot. So I'm gonna erase that, and I'm gonna erase the corner from here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put in where the dirt would terminate or end at the very top of the pot here inside and I want to erase these little extra lines that I made and then I'm going to start on the leaves and the stem so the first leaf is going to go like this and loop down like that tulips have long droopy leaves and then I'm going to make the thickness of that leaf and it's going to go like that and then they tend to fold and do this. So I'm going to do that with it. So there's my first leaf, and I'm going to erase that line because I don't want my leaf to look transparent. And I'm going to erase these two lines because I wouldn't be able to see through, see the pot through the leaves. And then I'm going to start putting in the stem. The stem's going to go here. You can make your stem a little bendy if you want to. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm gonna do my other leaf. My other leaf is gonna go here and here. And I wanna put a little bit of the fold of the thickness that you can view there. And then I'm gonna start with my flower. That's a little, un it's off center, so I'm gonna fix that so it's not off center. Erase, erase, erase. And then tulips have this interesting shape like this. And then I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't need that. I'm gonna take out <clears throat> this wall for the, like so. Okay, now I've got it all drawn in. Oops, I forgot I've got to erase that. I don't want my tulips stem or leaves to look like they're made of glass. I want them to appear to be opaque. Opaque means you cannot see through it. So I'm gonna clean all this up. And now I'm ready to start adding my dots. So we're going to make this one more whimsical than some of Kusama's work. Sometimes she uses orange and black only. Sometimes she uses black and white only. Sometimes she only uses yellow and black or red and white. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make this more fun so that we have more choices and we're gonna use the primary and the secondary colors. The primary colors, I'm gonna write this down, the primary colors let me write this so you can read it better. Primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So we're gonna use those three, and we're gonna give ourselves even more, more choices. We're gonna do the secondary colors as well. Those would be orange, green, and violet. So these are the colors that we can choose from. So I've got my red, 
yellow and blue marker and my orange oops come back here orange green and purple so those are the colors that I'm going to be using so I'll set those on the side and I'm going to start with <clears throat> my dots so I like to start with the background and because we're going to erase all of these lines inside the tulip we're going to keep the lines for the walls, but we're going to erase the lines for the tulip. The best thing to do is to create dots that um, are partial dots that seem to disappear. So what I mean is, you see how this dot is partial dot because it disappears behind the paintbrush? See how this dot is a partial dot because it wraps around the other side of the paintbrush. Same thing here. So we have s several dots that are on the walls or the floor, then they disappear behind the object. And when they do that, they help to define the edge of the object. Same thing happens when we do the dots that are partial dots along the edges. What's important to remember is that those dots have to be a variety of colors and sizes. So, as we're moving along, it's really important to remember that we need to create the dots around the edges. So I like to start there. So I'm going to grab my orange. That seems like a good place to start. And I'm going to do my first dot here. And then I'm going to put another small one that disappears behind the stem here. So I'll work with this color for a minute. And then see this one seems like it's going to get a little bit bigger here. So I'm going to make, because this part of the leaf is skinny, I think if I completed this circle, it would do this. Oops, takes a little bit of adjusting here and there. Hmm, something like that. And then you take that dot all along the edges of the flower, like so. And maybe I want a little one there. Now I'm going to change colors and go to green. Maybe I want a little green partial circle there and a nice big green partial circle here. And I'm gonna be very careful as I'm moving around the edges of this object. And I wanna stay inside my circle as I'm filling that in. And maybe here. It's important that you stay focused while you're doing this so you don't accidentally put a circle or half of a circle or a partial circle where you don't want it. You start talking with a neighbor or not really focusing on what you're doing, you tend to make mistakes. So now I'm going to change to purple and I'm going to start looking for places that I can put purple in other areas. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to work for a while and I'm going to finish this wall to give you an idea of what that looks like when it's finished. Your finished uh, wall might look like once uh, you've got all the dots in. So notice how I have a variety of sizes and I've spaced out the yellow dots so that they're not too close together. I've spaced out the orange and the red and the green and the purple so I don't have clusters of the same color too close together and I've made sure that I have a variety of different sizes of dots spread out so that it all looks nice and I've made sure that I've got dots surrounding 
the areas right up against the edge of the tulip. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on the inside of the tulip. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did around the outside edge of the tulip, but now I'm gonna work on dots inside the tulip. So for example, right here where I have this long part of the, um, the outline of the flower, I know that that's gonna go away. And oh, I've got, a, I've got a purple marker in my hand, but I just realized there's a purple dot right there. So I'm gonna switch to green. I'm going to go with a green and I'm going to pull it down here and I'm going to put a dot right there that's green and then maybe I'll get a yellow and put a yellow dot here and I'm going to let it touch both this line and that line I'm also going to be careful to define this line and this line because I'm going to get rid of those. So I want to make sure that I'm putting dots or portions of dots up against these areas so that the eye will, and the brain will be able to complete those lines so that the, the object will be visible in the space. It'll, it'll almost be like one of those Where's Waldo pictures where the image gets lost until you look at it long enough to find or make sense of what you're seeing there. So I think I might have enough yellow. I could come back to it and I can add some more yellow. But for right now I may have enough yellow in the flower. So I'm going to go to my red, see where I can add some red. Looks like I can add some red Oh, I probably shouldn't have added red because there's a red dot there, but that's okay. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm going to put a nice big dot. That's how I'm going to vary it. I'm going to make it a bigger dot. So I don't want it to be the same size as the dot that's there. I'm going to make it a bigger dot. Then I'm going to put a red dot here. And maybe a small piece of red here, and so on. So I'm going to pa pause the video again and finish it and come back. So here's what the completed flower might look like once you've got all your dots in. Um, now you have an example of what a completed wall and a completed part of your object looks like. And I've demonstrated for you how you make the... Um, the edges of the object more visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully erase, let's see if I can do this without smearing it, it might not be dry enough yet, let's see. Mm, I think I'm going to wait a little bit longer, I think that the marker is still just a little too wet. We're going to have to wait till it dries some more. Once it dries, we'll erase. So I'm going to pause the video again and let you guys go ahead and keep working and I'll keep working and I'll come back to show you the finished example. So you're going to go ahead and work on the right wall, the floor, and the rest of your, of your object. So here's the finished piece with the two walls, the, the floor, and the object all dotted up. And as you can see, the object at first bl blends into the background of all of the dots, but the longer you look at it, the easier it is to make out the edges. Now with mine, I was unable to erase the um, outlines of the object as well as I'd like to because I was using a darker art pencil for the benefit of the demonstration because I wanted you all to be able to see it. But for yours, um, you should be able to um, erase all of the outlines of your object as long as you press lightly when you are drawing it. I hope you enjoyed the project and I'll see you next time.